The Online Business Exchange was a two-day live event presented by the Business School at the Open University. During the event, there was live chat and forum discussions. The live chat is now closed, but we hope you enjoy the video that follows. Hi, and welcome back to the Online Business Exchange. Well, this session, uh, we're talking about supply chain management and the future. Um, and I am with uh, Bjorn Klaus and Rob Moore. Um, and we have been having a very interesting discussion uh, earlier about the future of the supply chain. We've been also focusing on how the consumer interacts then with the supply chain, talking about the way that, you know, there is more of a relationship with the consumer in that supply chain as they're coming further upstream. So where they're choosing how they're having goods and services delivered and how they're actually interacting with that. We've been talking about how that might impact on our online shopping, for example, whether our fridge can communicate with our supermarket what we're choosing to buy. And of course, the main issue then is this, this issue of control. How much control does the consumer have? And when there is this need and desire often to shop and to engage in a very tangible way, seeing goods and services, the supply chain is offering different options for consumers. Um, people have been talking in the chat about, you know, various hub shops, um, wonderful ideas around uh, the pub is the hub. So where you've got these, you know, high streets where the pub is thriving, but, you know, the post office and, um, you know, the general store may be a failing, can they come together? Can there be a way that consumers can go and have a coffee or a beer um, to pick up their post, to, to try on some goods and services without that actually being a retail environment where they're just saying, I like that, I'm going to order that and then ordering it online. So this whole issue of the role of the consumer and their interaction with the supply chain is very, very interesting. I wonder if we can talk a little bit about how that might be developing. I think it's 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 interesting to recognize that the digital business has been with us now for for quite some time at the Amazons and the, and the iTunes, and and it's, I think you see increasingly that that's something that we've known for 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 much longer already in a professional environment that there is different types of products. You have those products that are simple commodities that you don't really think about that you don't really compare. You just grab, or you just you have your choice of I don't know toilet paper. And you just keep on buying the same brand always. And you don't want to think about that. Baked beans could be another example. And yet there are... And so those, those products, or a book, for example, those products you can easily buy online. Because you don't necessarily have to test them. You know how they look like. And provided that they don't deviate from that, there's no, there's no comparison there. And then you have these products like a coat, uh, a suit, a jacket, um, a... a piece of technology that you don't really know what it is, where you would actually like to see it and to feel it and touch it and try it and combine it. And and there is where the digital economy hasn't helped us so much. Mm. Yeah, because what it has what has it done is that it made the role of the shops less and less important. Yeah, so what you see in the shops these days is in a small part of what you see in, in, uh, in, in the online offer. Mm. And it almost becomes now a bit... <laughs> you don't go to the shop just to buy your goods there. Mm. Hey, you kind of would love to see what is available and try and then make your choice and then go back online and order it in so the cheapest possible way. in terms of how we choose to consume and what items yeah, there, there is different products. shop for. Yes, there is different products. And, and so if you now just forget about all these, these commodities, mm. uh, because these, uh, uh, those more and more you will probably be able to source online and you could go to what's it, the Amazon thingy that you mentioned? Oh, the, the, the Dash scanner. The dash. <laughs> yeah, see, this is, this is interesting because, you know, there is this, you know, we, we accept that we might need just a supply chain of, of products. Yeah. We accept that there's some things we don't want to make those decisions about exactly. and we just want to be able to consume them. But then, like I was saying, the issue of control is important and the supply chain is adopting um, or adapting mm -hmm. even to, to try and, you know, work with consumers so that there is that element of control. Well, the supply chain needs to keep this this, this efficiency in, in mind because you can only survive in the in, in the in the supply chain environment if you're efficient and if you're cost effective. Mm. And so, if then for the, for the sake of the argument, let's forget about the baked beans and the, and, and the milks. Uh, sooner or later, we get to the point is what what in manufacturing is known as Kanban strategies that you basically have a box and if the box gets too empty, automatically a new box will appear and and replenish it. Um, if you then go to these these, these other goods, uh, what I said before, the suits and there you could perfectly well think that instead of going to a shop and hope that it's there, you could make the experience of going to the shop really, that's the purpose of the shop. Mm. And it's where we try things. That we, so I don't need to have 20 coats or I don't need to have 100 coats there for the 
customers who come there to buy, maybe I can make, and, and that's this hub idea, I can give a selection of the offer that I am offering, mm. and very broad selection, but not in large quantities, and there lets people try. Mm. Yeah, I need to make sure that there's one of every size, but not a hundred of every size. So you mm. just give one of every size, so people can actually go there, and that could be, and, 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 and I don't know, the, the, should, what, the pub is the hub. Mm. Yeah, it could be in, in, in a pub where you create an event, well, here we offer, mm. or we display our selection, come and try. And if you want it, well, there's the order form. Well, there's been a suggestion in the chat about whether we could turn, you know, often these empty high street stores into, yeah. you know, the retail environments. Well, yes. where people aren't necessarily buying, but where people can see and, and well, engage that changes, with That products. changes the nature of that high street. Mm. Yeah, you, because then, indeed, you do not go to the high street to buy the good. You just go to see and touch it. Mm. And you expect the, the broadness to be there. You don't expect the product to be there to take home. Mm. And that will change. That could potentially change the high street. Do you see that as being an emerging thing that could that happen? Be potential it's, it's, there there is a potential there for encouraging people what? back into the high street. Yeah. Um, because if you know, for these high value, these, um, uh, these items that you want to choose and you want to select for a specific purpose, yeah. Yeah, of course you want to go and see the quality. And quite often it's, what does it feel like? Well, yeah. you know, is it the same colour in, <laughs> in real life as it looked on the screen? Yeah. And um, so, yeah, can you imagine it I, I drawing them. people back into the town and away from the, and, and, just the and computer? And a daring entrepreneur could make a fantastic business there. Yeah. yeah. Because if I see the number of packages that arise at my house mm. with clothes that my wife orders, and then indeed she says, ah, you know what, it's not my shape. You mm. know what, it's not the colour that I expected mm. it to be. Mm. This is just... If from a from a sustainability and an, 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 an um, environment perspective, mm. incredibly inefficient, mm. or from a business perspective, because not every time that 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 something arrives, it needs to be in a bag, it needs to be packaged, it needs to be shipped as an individual package, mm -hmm. not in the truck full of. And then when we decide we don't want it, it needs to go back, which is incredibly inefficient. It lasts over time, and, and in that sense, an entrepreneur could make a hub. It could say, well, look, here we have an, 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 a pub that tends to go out of business. Why not uh, say, well, on, 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 on Saturday we, we show off our, mm. our broad line of clothes. Come there, come for a cup of coffee or a beer. Mm. Uh, make it an experience. Mm. Try out new things. And then if you want it, well, look, there's an iPad. Uh, put in your order and, and it will be delivered to you. And I suppose in the future, then that would probably be delivered by a drone by the time you get home. You know, <laughs> if knows? the supply Who chain knows? is yeah. opting, you know, yeah. having a maximum efficiency. But it, could be an, an, it, it, it is really bringing this additional level of efficiency mm. to the supply chain because still the traditional supply chain is awash with products that shouldn't go to the supply chain because mm. we don't want them. Mm. Yeah. We just that we don't know that we want them yet. So if yeah. I can That's solve probably that issue. The big, the big step forward is going to be getting rid of returns. Yeah. I think that is a the, the next big step. How do we do that? Well, it, this is it. It's well, because people are changing their minds. We're almost encouraged to do it. Yeah. Uh, you clothing shops order more than you want and send back the ones you yeah. don't want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know. So, <laughs> but as you say, when it comes to it, the efficiencies, mm. that's mm. where we've got a lot of inefficiency. Do you know what roughly the proportion is in terms of some of the? You know, how big is the returns issue? Well, I can see for my household, it's probably <laughs> seventy percent seems to go back these days. I mean, but it's. It's, but yeah, but that's what it is. And that's every a time big selling it, point as well. I mean, one of, one of the Amazon's great uh, yeah, strap yeah. lines is return it within 14 right. days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, and but, there are different legal, you know, there are different legal parameters when you buy something online as yeah. opposed to to um, to yeah, in a that, store. That's where the knowledge of the supply chain as an entrepreneur then comes in, because what we uh, or my wife, I'm going to identify her, doesn't think of the cost that it costs yeah, to process that return. Mm. Yeah, because every time that she orders a dress and I says, you know what, the shape is not right or the color is not right, somebody needs to bring it back. Mm. Somebody needs to look at it and say, is it, is it a new dress? Mm. Hasn't she worn it several mm. times? Um, is it torn? Is, it, is the label on? Mm. Uh, it mm. needs to now repackage it that it can be sold as a new product again. Mm. Because mm. every time that something has modified that product because it is damaged, it is, it is something happened to the product, mm. they can't sell it at the full price anymore. They will have to sell it as a used good. Mm. And you see that quite often yeah. in, in Amazon, that is there is an, 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 a warehouse offer, yeah. which is quite yeah. often a product that has there's something. So this knowledge then doesn't just relate to businesses, it relates to consumers. And you've yeah. mentioned things yeah. like, you know, sustainability and the way that consumers are interacting. Is there an onus then on the consumer to have some sort of responsibility in terms of how they're interacting with the supply chain to minimise returns? If they want us to be um, e economical 
uh, well, economical f uh, friendly, uh, low prices, if they want us to be environmentally su sustainable, then somehow something will have to give in. Mm. And there is a, a, a clear and explicit role for those who buy the goods for at every level, mm. including the consumers, mm. to understand the impact of their behavior. Mm. And if they then see, well, look, if I say, every time that I send something back because I changed my mind, mm. somehow there is a cost created. Mm. And there is an, an, a carbon footprint created mm. that is ultimately will translate to a cost and somebody will have to pay for it. Mm. And there's only one who pays here in the market and that's the consumer in the mm. end. Mm. Do you think we'll get to the point where we have um, something like on eBay, mm. you, you get your rating as a buyer, how good mm. are you as a buyer? So just imagining now some, some of these online retailers. <laughs> yeah. If you return, some, you get a, a mark against yeah. you or something. Yeah. Imagine yeah. if you were rated as a consumer and you got a discount if you were... that's assuming that there is a negative, you know, your wife, would it be fair to say, someone you know, for example, we can look at these things statistically, but then you can say, well, as an individual, if I'm choosing to buy these things, if I'm choosing to interact, yeah. and if you're choosing to have returns policy as such, yeah. is it not my right as a consumer? And does that make it me is. a bad uh, well, consumer? You don't make it a negative, you make it a positive, that uh, if, uh, if you, if you uh, keep 80% of the things that you order, you get a, a rating. Then you get on thin ice, <laughs> yeah, because despite her shipping back behavior, yeah. she's a good consumer. Yeah. And she's an interesting consumer for because she buys clothes. Yeah, yeah. And that's the way. Mm -hmm. It is just that the system allows her to do it, and therefore we do it. Now we gain the experience of how the system works, yeah. and little by little, there, there, there's the, and that's the digital supply, yeah. the information flows fr yeah. flowing freely, there emerges a realization that there is a component here that maybe should be curbed. For the benefit of all of us. Right. But again, we're moving yeah, away from uh, comparing to manufacturing and, and business, bringing it into the social side. You do get preferred customer, preferred supplier status mm, 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 that's, mm. that's based on the way that you performed and the way that you've interacted. So this could be a development, you think, uh, 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 that happens both ways? Well, the technology's there now to mm, do this. Mm. Because with the sharing of information, the transparencies, you you can see exactly the purchases. I mean, how many times do you went to Google mm. and you've got an advert pop up on the side mm. for something mm. you were looking at 20 yeah. minutes earlier? Yeah, exactly, yeah, but, all the time. But, but then you, you raise this issue about, you know, how we could have these hubs. Okay, so this is a solution. We could go and touch things. It's a solution for a particular type of product. But it, yeah, exactly. It doesn't, have, it doesn't meet all products. And even if you are able to see the colour of the skirt, you might not be able to try it on with the blouse, for example. So there is exactly. there will always be to some extent yeah. This issue of return. That, that's that's the way we do business. But I think it, it's it's not. I don't think we, we need to seek it to 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 ex, uh, to, to to stop it altogether. Mm -hmm. You will have change of minds, and there needs to be a way of returning goods because otherwise people just become reluctant to buy, and we don't want to stop. Uh, and the amount of people who either. go on eBay after a few pints and uh, oh, yeah. will decide it, that they absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but I think what what we need to curb is a little bit is this this the the we order and we order and we order and then we ship back and we ship back and we ship back without actually being realizing that that adds to our cost. Mm. And if if that somehow if there's new business models coming yeah. in that allow that to to be reduced. Yeah. That is an interesting proposition. Do you see this as part of the corporate social responsibility um, remit of some of these large companies to begin educating consumers about some of the implications of this returns behaviour? I, I, I don't like that. I, well, I, I, I like the concept, but I don't like putting the responsibility only at, at, at large companies. But who is to educate consumers then? Well, first and foremost, the consumers themselves. Yeah. They have a responsibility. What and and I would rather say, well, leave it up to the market to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. there, there is, it's it's not one or the other. It is a blend of curbing it maybe by rules and regulations, but there's there's also giving a place to the market of coming up with new business models, mm -hmm. and 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 somehow responsibility on the part of the consumer to analyze their behavior. Mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm bit reluctant to accept a, a, a pampering society that tells me what I can do and what I can't do, mm. because I wouldn't be comfortable in that. Yeah. Um, and I think we need to leave the freedom on the, on, the, on, the, on the part of the consumer, but I think we need to educate the consumer, not by telling them what they can't do, but by using this, this, this transparency in the supply chain, by telling them, well, look, you, you, this is the impact of what you do, mm. and but giving me transparency that if I send everything back, well, this is the premium that I have to pay for that. Mm. I'm just thinking about some of the online um, 
orders I've made from supermarkets. Right. When you go to book your slot, yeah. um, quite often there'll be a little green van yeah. that, that shows up that says, uh, book any slot you like, yeah. but we're in your area yes, already yes, on this yes. day. So by booking this one, yeah. you will be actually well, maybe, saving the maybe, environment. Maybe you're getting discounts. Well, no, well, it's maybe just in the future, right. but not at the moment. Yeah. It, is, it is that very value-laden decision yeah. right now, isn't it? But if, if you... If the choice is completely open, mm. and by choosing this particular one with no impact on you, you mm. can have a positive effect, you will choose it. So that's an information but then, thing. But then go to the EasyJet model or the Ryanair mm. model, right, in which you have all these, to, the, these yep. seats to choose from. The longer you wait, the less, you, yeah. the more the, the yeah. more expensive that it comes. Put the responsibility on those who who, yeah. who make the decision. And if I want to have a convenient slot, uh, book early, yeah. or pay a little bit less for a for a, a low. Uh, a, a, yeah. you know that, so uh, there's a financial trade-off then mm. between. So so we well, should there's be. There's a financial incentive. I would like to. Yeah. 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 Because consumers then could make that decision yeah. based on you know, but but making that decision purely on ethical grounds. Mm has other implications and may not be one, as we've seen with fair trade bananas, that, yeah. That, yeah. that is necessarily driving the market. I'd like to talk about some specific examples, and particularly in Fung, Alibaba, etc., um, about ways that um, some of the large organisations are taking advantage of the digital economy. Look, I think the, the, I mean, we've talked quite a bit already about the, the, the Amazons, but mm. it, it's the digital economy is just changing the supply chain so much that, that there is this complete disconnect between those who make the product and those who actually sell the product mm. and those who, who transport the, the, mm. or, or who, who ship the product. If you look at the, the companies that you mentioned, uh, look at uh, Alibaba as an example of it. Uh, more people will be probably familiar with, with, uh, with eBay. Mm. Uh, eBay doesn't make anything. It doesn't see any of the product that it sells and yet it makes a business out of them by just bringing parts together and facilitating a particular supply chain. And especially for small businesses, they can tap into a very they effective can. supply they chain can. with the financial options of PayPal, etc. What so is the, the, the limitation if you're a small organization that you don't have the physical network or the platform to make those connections? Mm. Yeah, but what, what Amazon does, what eBay does, what Alibaba does, and, and what other companies do, who are even much, much bigger than those, they kind of make the connections and they mm. facilitate it and, and, and their business truly is supply chain. So to what extent do small businesses, you know, we spoke about knowledge and we spoke about how you, having that supply chain can give you better links. You, you've got more knowledge, you've got more control, I guess, of that whole process. But when there are such viable options, in particular for small businesses, when effectively you could market, you could even then import your stock and, and rotate that around your sales if you were using a digital economy very effectively. You know, to what extent then is it worthwhile investing in that supply chain for small businesses in particular? Well, we, we look at where the the small business fits in. So a small business can fit into a supply chain to a larger business. Mm. And where we're seeing some real advantages, are the, the thing that large businesses hate is uncertainty. Mm. Whether they cannot afford to be uncertain about when things are being, being delivered, the quality when things are being made. What the digital supply chain allows us to do, or allows the big company to do, is have that real focus on the quality, the timings, the, the progress. Mm. So larger companies can engage with smaller companies and have that confidence. Mm. Now the smaller company will have to fit into the larger company's uh, way of working, but again, it taps in then to a range of expertise, um, a range of systems and uh, organizational arrangements that it wouldn't be able to do on its own. Mm. So again, a really nice relationship. So a smaller organization can work uh, with a large one, and as class, um, I'll be honest, said a few times, we can um, that the larger companies don't want the small companies to fail. They want them to succeed, and by sharing these uh, the information, you also got the opportunity for a small company to use the very large organisations like Amazon. Amazon shops are very popular. People can run entire businesses using the uh, the Amazon platform, and then, again. As Bjorn says, that Amazon never sees the products, it's just the supply chain. I think it all has to do again with uh, being aware of what is the product that we buy, what, is our, what are our unique selling points, and how can we best perform in that. If I buy, if, I, if I'm a small business owner and my business is baked beans, I just need to focus on efficiency. Efficiency is what drives my business. And to me, to compete with the efficiency that can be obtained via some of the platforms of these large organizations is almost impossible to match that. Yeah. So in that sense, it's well, if I can't beat them, join them, use that system. If I'm the other extreme of, of, of the commodity, if I'm an artist, 
uh, or in, and I sell some exp- or, or, or some piece of art or an experience, I'm unique in that. And then the delivery of that product is not so very important. Uh, th- those who would be interested in my product, they will travel, they will wait, and they will invest to get that problem, mm-hmm. to to get that product. Sorry. Um, but then I need to think, oh, what is the experience of mm-hmm. how can I, you know, stay in touch with this consumer? Mm-hmm. How can I stay in touch with that market? And and then the the platforms of those big companies all of a sudden don't work anymore. And there I have to just adjust my supply chain, which then it really comes down to what we talked already before in, in the previous mm-hmm. session. Is it is know know your environment, know what are the the, the trends in that, and know where you need to focus. Mm-hmm. And I think more than ever before, small companies can associate themselves with services mm-hmm. of of larger companies mm-hmm. for their own benefit. Mm-hmm. Um, those are excellent concluding thoughts, Bjorn, because um, we, we've got a lot coming up on small businesses later. Um, but, you know, it, it is so important for people to be mindful of these yeah. these various aspects. And, you know, as I think we've, we've gone on to talk about, the economy is shifting so dramatically, so quickly, and it's important to have that knowledge to, to know where to make the most of it. And meanwhile, in the chat, um, we've heard two people going into business together. Um, town centres are being transformed and uh, consumers say that they like green choices when they are given the option. Um, so... Very interesting food for thought there. Bjorn and uh, Rob, thank you so much for coming and talking about this today. You're having a live chat session a little bit later where we can continue this dialogue. And indeed, there will be chat after this session. So do keep those thoughts coming through. If you are in the watch only, come back into the watch and engage so that you can see the chat in the next session. Um, and don't forget, you can also engage with us on Twitter. The hashtag is OU underscore exchange. And you will have been invited to Yammer Discussions when you registered for the event, and there is one on supply chain management there. If you are interested in supply chain management, there is a MOOC, which we've been talking a little bit about this morning, um, and that begins um, in November, the 21st of November, Effective Supply Chain Management. It's a 12-hour course over four weeks, um, free, but you can get a certificate and you can collate that with a number of other courses on the digital economy to get credit towards an MBA. So do check that out, and all the details of that are on the website. We will be back um, at 12.30 for our next live session with Devendra. I will see you then.